Now, if you've bought a, say, your own Humphrey or Lottie or Baby Jack kit, then this is the video tutorial to help you step by step make them up. You'll just need a regular sewing machine with a straight stitch. I would suggest that you buy a walking foot if you don't have one already, because that really can help to stop the fabric from slipping. So let's take a look at how we make them. First of all, take everything out of the box and have a look at it. You'll find two sets of patterns. These are the dungarees and the dungaree patterns. So we'll put those to one side because that comes much later. And then you have your full instructions on how to make Humphrey. There's your fabric and your thread for the eyes and his tuft. So have a read through those, just get your head around the way that it works. And then these are your pattern pieces for the Humphrey Soft toy. There are 25 pieces in total and you'll need to cut every one of those out individually and then pin them onto your, uh, your furry fabric. If there's a dart, cut into the dart, and on the side of the front and the back of the head, there's a slit where the ear's going to be inserted. Do cut into that, into the fabric as well, so of course into the pattern. So first of all, we need to cut out every one of those 25 pieces. Now when you put your fabric out, it does say in the instructions that the nap of the fabric needs to face downwards. So just give it a stroke and make sure that it feels, it feels right stroking it downwards. If you stroke it the wrong way, then it'll go all lumpy. Because all of the pieces need to be arranged on the fabric, all facing in the right direction. I've already cut out my pieces now, and I've pinned them onto the fabric. Um, just to mention, the selvage, which is the side edge, the two side edges don't actually overlap the pattern onto that selvage because it'll have a, a different kind of texture to the rest of the fabric. Make sure that when you look at the pattern pieces, you can read all of the writing on those patterns so you know that they're all facing in the right direction. Um, and jiggle them around. You will see on the instructions there's the way that I've laid these out, but if you find that you can fit them in a little bit better, it's, it's a bit like a jigsaw puzzle, and make the most of the fabric, then do so. Now when you're happy, you've got all of your pieces pinned on there. All 25, keep counting them so you know there's none missing. That's when we're going to cut out every single one of these pieces. Right, I've cut out all of my uh, pattern pieces from the fabric. I kind of like to pair them together so the ears are together, the hands are together, the left and right sides of the body parts are together. And then I've started with um, an airy erasable pen just to write the, the numbers. So, for instance, the bottom pattern is number 21. So I've written number 21 on the back of this. Just make sure I'm using an airy erasable pen. If you're going to use um, a permanent pen, do a little test punch first on a scrap piece of fur just to make sure that the ink doesn't show through to the right side. But that's going to help me identify each one of those pieces. So there's my right leg, which is number 11. Front left side of face is number 25. And I just find that makes it a little bit easier. Okay, then we're going to start actually piecing the pieces together. But the first thing I'm going to do is to embroider the eyes and the eyebrow onto both sides of the face before I actually start sewing together. So this is the, the left side of the front face, number 25. I've just taken that off its, uh, off its pattern. And I need to take some very small scissors or a craft knife and I'm going to cut out the eye hole and then across where the eyebrows are. So there's the eye. Try and keep that the right shape. It should be an oval. And I'm just going to make a quick slit across where the eyebrow is going to sit. Um, and as with the instructions, I'm going to em embroider this from the back. Um, it tends to make it easier and a little bit neater. So I'll line up the pattern back to my fabric again. And I'm just going to put a pin in there just to hold it in place. Or two. And then with my pen, I'm literally going to draw on the back of the fabric and, and kind of colour in the whole of the area of the eye. And then where I've made the slit for the eyebrow, I'm just going to draw a line through that hole. So I've got the perfect marking as to where the eye and the eyebrow needs to be. So I've taken my thread, which I've split into two, and I'm literally going to start in the centre 
and sew in one side and out of the other. I'm not going to knot my thread for now. I'll just pull that through and leave a bit of a tail. That, that will be kind of incorporated into your embroidery. Then go right next to the first hole and across to the second. Don't pull this too tight because if you do your fabric will pucker. So nice and flat and just from one side to the other very slightly above your previous stitch. Until the whole of the eye is covered. Now of course we are stitching in an oval shape so your stitches are going to get slightly narrow as you get to the top. Then I'm going to go back over the same stitches because it gives the eye a little bit of dimension. Until the whole of that eye area is covered. So a tiny stitch at the top to complete the oval shape. So when I turn it over you'll see I've got, I've got half an eye. Um, the colour of the thread is very much the same colour as the uh, actual fabric. Deliberately so, because that's what Humphrey's eyes look like. So again, from one side to the other, pull that through, and go back again over the eye, back to the centre where I first started, and then we'll do the bottom half of the eye. Oops, just pull that reasonably tight, but not again so that the fabric is gathered up. You don't want to gather the fabric. And his eyes should look quite subtle when they're finished and quite quite sleepy and quite soft. So about halfway there now. Just finish off the other half. Now if you really wanted to make this very secure, if there are young children that are going to be playing with Humphrey, then I would suggest putting a little tiny blob of fabric glue right onto the back of your stitches, just to make sure that that thread is never going to come undone. So one last tiny stitch here. I'll just keep checking on the front side that the eye actually looks like an oval. And again, it's quite, it's quite subtle, it's quite discreet. And then I'll finish off with a knot in the back here. And then I've got enough thread to make the eyebrow, Oops. which I'm just going to use a back stitch. So where I marked the line for the eyebrow, I'll take my thread in, leave that loose end and then go back over the same stitch but bring my needle out about an eighth of an inch in front of it and then join at those stitches. They will overlap on the right side of my fabric and they'll look like a oh, come and down, little running stitch on the other side. And again, it'll give that very subtle line of an eyebrow. And then I'll do the same on the other side and that's Humphrey's face finished. So those are the two sides of my face as embroidered with the eyes and with the eyebrows. The next thing I'm going to do is to sew the darts. Now in the front and the back of the head, at the bottom of each one of the panels, you'll see a little V-shape that you've already cut out. So those are the darts and I'm going to sew those together now. So fold your fabric in half. You could hand stitch this to start with if you wanted to, but I'm not going to. I'm going to start just off the edge of my fabric with a straight stitch, quite a short straight stitch and sew around about a quarter of an inch seam. When you get to the end, just back stitch a couple of stitches just to secure those stitches. And there's my little dart. So I'll do this on the other side of the front of the face, just in the same place. So again, fold over, start just off the fabric. It gives a smoother line. reverse at the end. So that's the two panels from the front of my face where the eyes and the eyebrows are. On the second side or the back side again I've got these two little nicks in the back of the head so I'll do exactly the same thing. Just fold those two pieces together. Again you can pin this and you can 
attack it by hand if you prefer to. Make that a quarter of an inch again, so not a very big seam. And then we have the final section and number 16, another one of the back sides of the head. Like so. So that's all four panels of the head. But the next thing we're going to do is start to put together the ears. Those are my four ears. So I'm going to fold them over so they're right sides together. And I'm just going to hand tack these just to show you how I do that. Now I'm going to need to stitch all the way from the point of the ear here all the way around the curve to the edge. And the thing with the fleece is it's beautifully soft. It's a wonderful fabric to use, but it does tend to slip. So instead of doing a regular tacking stitch, which would be like a running stitch, I'm going to do an over edge stitch and just stitch all the way around the edge of both of the ear pieces. Um, I'm going to sew over the top of these on my sewing machine so there's no need to take these tacking stitches out. And I'm just using pink so that you can see where I'm sewing. Normally I'd use exactly the same colour as the fabric. But again, you're not going to see this when I sew anyway. So keep them quite short. My seam allowance on all of the Humphrey pieces, apart from the dots, as explained in the instructions, is um, a quarter of an inch. So if I keep these tacking stitches within the quarter of an inch, then they're not going to be seen. And if they do happen to be seen when I turn this inside out, then I will simply unpick them, because these aren't the stitches that are going to hold the ears in place. That will be the sewing machine stitches. So they don't have to be uniform in length, they don't have to look pretty. All these stitches are doing is holding the two pieces of fabric together. Now you could do this on all of the rest of the pieces if you find that easier. If you're uh, quite a beginner or you want to make sure that your stitching is absolutely accurate. If you're a bit more advanced then you probably won't do this at all, but that's, uh, that's your prerogative. And actually if you do hand sew, if you have the time or the inclination or the patience to over stitch the edges of all of your pieces like this, it just means that they're not going to fray quite so much. Because this is a fabric that, as you probably noticed, does fray quite a lot. Um, it's because of the, uh, the way it's been manufactured. It's incredibly super soft and fine fleece. But you wouldn't expect any less from your Humphrey. Okay, so that's ear number one. I'll quickly do exactly the same on the second ear. So again, from the curve, from the corner of the curve. I don't tend to tie a knot in my thread when I'm sewing. I'll just go over a couple of times to secure it, particularly when I'm only tacking. Because, again, these stitches aren't very important visibly. They're very important in the job they do, but not in the way that they're seen. So over and over. And just around the curve, because we're going to turn this inside out in just a second, when we sew on the machine. Let's just catch that in the side, carrying around the curve. I like to use um, quite a long needle, it's just something that I prefer. This is a, a sharp. Um, as long as it's... Um, the eye of the needle is the same width as the, 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 the thread, basically. You'll get a, a good pull through of the thread. I just like working with long needles. But it really doesn't matter for something like this. OK, just round to the top. And I'll just sew over a couple of times to secure the stitch on the end. Like so. Then I'm going to turn both of the... Oh, no, I'm going to sew those first, aren't I? So sew around with your machine, first of all. So I'll just bring mine forward. And I'm just using a straight stitch, but quite a short one. And we'll sew all the way down the side with my quarter of an inch seam allowance, which happens to be the width of the foot that I'm using. So I'll back tack to help lock the stitches at the end. 
then very gently around the curve, just feed the fabric through to give a nice smooth line. And back tuck those stitches at the second end so I know they're not going to come undone. And I'm going to keep my threads out of the way and tidy. The same with the second ear. Then I'll turn the ears the right side out. Like so. There's no need to press with the fabric, just crease it open with your fingers. And then just one final thing to do is to fold the end of the ears inwards. And again, I'm just going to put a little tack to hold that in place before I insert this into the seam. Uh, the dots are in the side of the ear. So just sew over and over a few times. I folded it over by about a quarter of an inch. And because I've got um, ears that mirror image each other, I'll just make sure that with the second ear it's folded over in the opposite direction so they match. Just again by about a quarter of an inch. and a quick tack to hold that in place. Now these sections are going to be pinned into the side of the head. You will get a lot of fluff with this fabric, it's the very nature of it. So what I want to do is to make sure that I've got the ears in the right section. So here's the side of my face, as you can see with the eyes that I've embroidered. And I want the ear to face down but with the part that I've folded over facing inwards. You may have to cut the little slit in the side of the head a little bit larger. Hold that in place against the bottom section. I will need to cut this one. I would rather you had to cut into it rather than that hole be too big. So I'm just going to cut a little bit more. So the ear at the bottom sits in the bottom half of the, uh, the slit and then fold the second section over the top so the ear is pinched into the side of the head and I'm going to sew across. Again, if you find that easy, you've seen the way that I, um, I can tack or you could pin, but just for speed's sake, I'm just going to sew that straight into the section. I think you get the idea of the way that it fits. So that's the way that it looks. So Humphrey's ear is facing downwards with a fold on the inside. And then I'll do the same with the second side of the head. So again, facing inwards, I will need to cut that line a little bit longer, only around about a quarter of an inch, but make sure you measure this before you do this yourself. Place the ear against the second, uh, the bottom section of that slit. Fold the top section over so the ear is sandwiched in between the side of the head and then sew across here. And there's the second side of the ear. Now before I start putting the head together, what I need to do now is to open up that curve on the side of the ear needs to be sewn across the side of the head here. Now they're not quite the same shape, so you will need to take this slowly. This is only a tacking stitch and I want you to sew very close to the edge of the seam because you won't see this again when the fabric's sewn together, when the panels are sewn together. So what I'm doing is curving the ear away from my hand so that it's in a straight line. I'll show you this in just a second, it'll make more sense. So that's the side of my head seam. Remember my ear piece was curved, but I stretched it to make it straight. And that means when the head is all put together, it gives a shape to the ear, it makes the ears stick out a little bit because some of his ears don't lay flat to his head, they curve around a little bit. So again, on this side, there's the curve of the side of the ear, that's the straight section and the seam, and I want those two to match. So if I start just on the point 
where the ear meets the head and then twist this open so that the ear curls is straight. You can see this bending, that's supposed to happen. A stitch down the side and that again is a tacking stitch. So we're not going to see it and I want that to be as close to the edge of the fabric as I can. And that again gives you definition and shape to the ears. So those are the two side pieces of the head. And I'm going to sew the back of the head to the front of the head. If you're not sure which piece is which, the back of the head isn't symmetrical. The, 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 the back seam shapes around a little bit more than the side seam. So I'm going to pin together first of all from the point at the top of the head all the way around the seam. Now although there's a curve on both sides of the seams, they're not equal. Because remember where we put the ear in and it distorted the shape of the fabric a little bit. Well now it's starting to fight back because the shape of the ear is actually curving up. So by pinning it, it just means, or tacking it if you wanted to, if you've got the time to do that, then it'll help to stop that fabric from moving and keep both sides lined up. But it will give a, a dimension to your Humphrey when it's finished. And it helps to stop the fabric from moving with it being such a shiny fleece. It does tend to slip a little bit, which is why I recommended using a walking foot. So I'm going to start using my quarter minute seam allowance, take a few steps backwards, and then slowly and carefully keep around that curve, keeping the edges of the fabric lined up together, over the lumpy bit where the ear is. And then I'm just going to stop and check that everything's lined up. You can take those pins out now and follow again the edges of the fabric, the two edges of the seams together until I come down to the bottom section. And that's the base of the neck. And again, just back tap to secure that. And then I'll do just the same. So that's how we're looking now. So you can see it's getting dimension. You can see the shape of the head starting to form. Um, there's his ear look, which is sticking out because it was curved, so it's, it's sticking away from that seam. And because of the darks, he's getting shape around his neckline, so you can see the shape of the head coming together. And then I'll do exactly the same with the other side of the head. So again, starting off at the point, so I'm sewing from the top section, or the front section of the head now. And again, I'm just going to pin those pieces, just to help the fabric to stop slipping, because it will do, because it's such a super soft fleece fabric that we're bringing in here. This is the bit that's going to fight back around the ears. So I'll keep that curve fold it in, keep the two edges together. The ear will be a little bit lumpy, but that's because of the way that it's been shaped. Into the bottom. And it is a knitted fabric, so it will have a little bit of give in it. So we'll go backwards. Take the pins out. So you can ease these seams in if they don't meet perfectly, which means giving one side or the other a little bit of a stretch to make sure that those edges meet together. This is where the tacking stitches for the ear were, so I'm sewing on the inside of those so I don't see them. And just guiding the four edges together with a back stitch to stop that from coming undone. Okay, so that's what I've got now. Those are the two sides of the heads. The next thing I'm going to do whoops, is to sew the trunk in place. So there's my two trunks. I know which one's which because obviously I want the fleecy side to match with the fleece of the face. And these again are going to be seams that argue with you. So pop the top of the trunk in the top of here. Might be easier to tack this if you're quite new to sewing because you've got one seam that goes this way and the other one that, ha that heads this way. And we want those to align. So let's pin all the way around here. Try not to stretch the fabric because it is knitted, it will stretch. Bend the trunk around so those two end pieces should meet perfectly. One more pin in there. So it seems a little bit odd because the seams are facing, or the edges are facing in opposite directions, but it, but it will work. 
So quick back check here. Just using the edge of my sewing machine foot to give me an even seam allowance. This is the bit where it gets a little bit tricky going around this curve. But as long as those raw edges are meeting, then it's going to be fine. And there's the first half of my trunk. And then we'll do the same with the second half of the head. So again, you can see where the trunk's going to sit. Fleecy sides together. Whoops, come here. Flip that side over and make sure that the top of the trunk meets the top of the head and pop your pins in. I find it easier to do it from this side. So pop your pins in. Just make sure that those edges meet up together even though they're fighting against each other because they're they're curved in opposite directions. This is what gives Humphrey shape to his face. And again, if you wanted to hand sew that, it may be easier if you're not quite used to sewing. But for speed's sake, we'll just do this by pinning. Okay, so I'll back tack again just to make sure those stitches are held in place quarter of an inch seam allowance, take the pins out as you go, uh, bring them down to the bit where it twists so it feels a little bit uncomfortable but it'll be fine and then down to the end of the, the slot. So that's the second part. And now again following the instructions, the next thing I'm going to do is to sew the two halves. Oh, Mark. So the next thing I'm going to do is start working on the body. Um, the uh, the back body piece, the big round section, is the back of Humphrey, and then when the front section goes on, that's a little bit slimmer. So I, I've lined up the back and the front from both sides, and I'm going to sew across the shoulder of each side first of all. So line those two up together. Again, pin or tack if you if you want to. I shan't for speed's sake. And again, I'm just using a, a quarter of an inch side of my foot seam allowance. And back tack at the end of each stitch. And the same on the other section. So right sides together, furry sides together, fold those in half and just sew across the shoulder. And back tuck again. So again, I've just moved the machine out of the way. That's the back of Humphrey, so that will be his left side. And the big round section is the back of Humphrey, which makes this his right side, which makes it easier for me to figure out which one of the arms I'm going to fit, which is going to be the next stage. So this is Humphrey's right arm. And I will need to pin or tack or sew from seam to seam all the way around this section here. And in fact, I'm going to pin both ends together so my seams match up. And then just like when I was making up the, the ears, I'm going to hand tack this. Because I think you'll find it easier when you're sewing into just in such a tight little semicircular space to have this already hand tacked. And I think particularly when the, your edges are going in, in opposite directions, it's a good idea to do this. Because I've got one seam on the inside of the arms that is like a, a semicircular curve, and the seam on the outside of the arm, which is an arc. And I'm trying to make those, those two seams marry up together. Importantly, as you're doing this, 
that you don't stretch the fabric. And it's tempting to do that because it's a knitted fabric and by its very nature, knitted fabric stretches. So I don't want this to stretch as I'm just sewing it in place. So again, just going over and over the edges, quite close to the edge, just like we did with the trunk or the ears. And they, they will line up, you just need to make sure you don't stretch. So again, around the side seams, and I need to do this with both arms before I take them to the machine. Over the seam of the arm. That's, that goes down the side of the body, so I've just gone over that section. And until these two side pieces meet up, and they will do, they'll match perfectly. And this is where, if they don't, if you, if you find that your fabric moves a little bit, because it is a stretchy fabric, just ease that in a little bit, so you can pull the seams together so they match. Shouldn't need to do that, but you can do if, uh, if they do slip. And that's the nature of this fabric, it does slide quite a lot. But it's so worth it, it's the softest of fleas. Okay, so the, my two ends now match up perfectly. And then we'll take this to the sewing machine. So that's how we're looking. It's just tacked in place. And there will be the arm sitting in the side of the body. A little bit difficult again, considering that the, the seams are really, or the edges are working against each other. You just need to make sure that you keep it nice and flat with no puckering. And they work with it. It's just, it just feels a little bit odd to be doing it when they, when you've got an arc and a semicircle that you're trying to match up together. Just keep pulling the fabric out so it's not puckering. I don't want any puckers in there. It should lie nice and flat and smooth. Like so and just keep stretching it. So when we come to the, the end of the line, so to speak, there's my shoulder, the front side of my body, my back side of my body, and that's the sleeve that I've just sewn in, or the armhole that I've just sewn in. So I'll just do exactly the same now with the other side and its arm. So that's the back of my body, which is the, the wider side. There's the front of the body and that's where the arm has been inserted. What I need to do now is to sew both sides of the arm together all the way down the inside of the arm and the inside of the body. But I need to make sure that the, the seam lines underneath the arm actually meet up. So make sure those meet before you start sewing. So I'm going to back tack, sew down to the underarm seam, Stop with the needle in the down position and then pivot this around and then I'll just sew down the side of the body like so. And again when I get to the end I'll just back tap that stitch. And then do the same with the other side of the body. So it's inside out but there's my armhole. The next thing to do would be to sew in the, the hand so so that's it. that's a circle, it doesn't matter which way around it goes. And then you can pin or you could hand tack all the way around. So that sits inside. I'm just going to sew that as it is, but it would be an idea to hand tack this section just to make sure that your seams meet up. So I'm sewing in a circle. I'm trying not to stretch the fabric, and it's very tempting because this is a knitted fabric and it does have a natural stretch.
but that means that if you do find that um, the hand isn't fitting perfectly inside the sleeve after you've hand tacked this, you can ease that a little bit. So you can give it a little bit of a pattern stretch to make sure it fits if you find that it's moved while you're sewing. Because they, they, these things happen, depends on your machine and the tensions that you use and the thread that you're using. It can all, all have an effect on your finished stitching. All I need to make sure is that uh, when I turn this the right way around, I don't have any puckering. Because that will give it an unprofessional finish. So I've sewn in the bottom. I'll turn it the right side out now just to show you where we are at the moment. So there I've got the hand section. No puckering, nice and flat, sitting at the end of the arm. But I'll need to turn that the other way around for now because I'm going to sew the head to the body. Remember the fat side is the back side, the flat side is the front side. So I'll take the appropriate side of the head, so the front side facing the shorter side. I want to match up the two seams across the shoulder and the neckline. I'll pop a pin in there, tack it if you want to. And then we'll start sewing the two edge seams here together. So again, I'm going to back side. Leave the needle in the down position as I'm sewing. Make sure those shoulder seams are lined up. They don't need to be, but it does look more professional when your seams meet up. I'll spin this around and across the front of the neckline. And back tack. And have a look. And that's the way we're looking at the moment. So my hand's still there inside out. That can stay there for the moment. You can see the shape of the head, the ear sticking out, the eyes are embroidered, all of the fleece is facing the same direction. What I'm going to do now is to join the front and the back of the complete body together. I have my tuft, which I've sewn into a piece of fabric, and that's really important because we don't want this fur to come out. Now, first of all, that's going to sit facing inwards just on the seam that goes across the top of Humphrey's head. And I'm going to stitch across that. It says to pin it in the instructions, but I'm just going to put a sew line so that it doesn't have pins in the way. And I've sewn this so that the fleece that it's attached to, I'll show in a second, just sits on the top of the seam. So when the second seam goes over the top of the tuft, then that tuft is going to be well and truly trapped. I don't want little fingers pulling out those hairs. And the next thing is to sew all the way around. And I want to make sure that my seams match. So leaving the tuft face inwards, but my seams facing outwards. That's going to be my first pin. I need to make sure that the seam at the top of my trunks match. There's another pin. I want to hold the seams together in between because remember the fabric will slip a little. That's the nature of the fleece. So a pin there. I need to pin all the way around my trunk making sure that the seams, uh, the, the two pieces are edge to edge perfect. I need to make sure that the seam at the bottom of the trunk matches up. The seam at the neckline matches up. I'm going to sew all the way around the tummy. This may be another one of those sections where you want to hand sew, which is time consuming, but it'll ultimately make it easier when you take this to the sewing machine. So all the way down to the bottom here. Lots of pins if you're not going to hand tack, we'll keep that in place. Back to the top of the head, then I need to match up the edges of my head so the neck seams match. The back of the head all matches.
and then I'll sew all the way across Humphrey's back. But I need to leave a gap here in the middle of the seam so that I can turn it the right way out. So I'm going to sew from the bottom here by about three inches, then leave a hole of about four inches, and then carry on sewing all the way around the rest of the head and the body. Uh, if you've got a problem sewing over pins, take them out as you go. I don't mind. So I'm going to sew a couple of inches and back tack. Then leave my gap for turning. I don't need to cut the fabric at this point. Back tack again because there will be some stress on that seam when I turn and put the right way around. Into the nape of the neck pop the needle down. Now I'm going around the back of the head. With about a quarter of an inch seam allowance again all the way around. I'm going to go over Humphrey's tuft on the top of his head. And here I'm going to back tack and go over that backwards and forwards a few times because I don't want those, uh, that tuft to come out. This is going around the front of Humphrey's head. And when I get to the point where the trunk meets at the seams, I'll stop, lift the, knee, lift the foot presser up, and turn this around. And then very slowly, I'm going all the way around the trunk, just curving that around. I find it easier to go slower, and just make sure that your fabric's flat so we don't get any tucks. Keep these two pieces lined up. Into the little bit underneath the trunk. Lift your foot up. Put it down while you turn it and that gives you a nice sharp point underneath the trunk. Into it again just underneath Humphrey's trunk. Make sure the seams are matched up here. Stop with the needle down and turn that around. And then we're going to go into his neck. Stop with the needle down. And then we'll sew around the rest of his tummy. Just matching up again the edges of the fabric. Nice straight curve. Here we're all inside out. You can see the shape of his head. There's his tuft in place. Arms either side. I need to take my pins out at this point. There's a pin in there. There we go. And then the next section I'm going to do is to sew on his bottom. So that's him for his bottom. I'm going to fold it in half. And I just want to mark the central line at the bottom section and around the curve, like that. And then I'll take the Humphrey body and I'm going to pin the centre of the back to the centre seam at the back. and pin the raw edges without stretching them all the way around both sides. Like so. And then around the other curve. And then we'll machine stitch. And again, if you, if you feel it's better to to hand tack this, it's worth all of the effort and the time because it just means that Humphrey's going to look perfect when he's finished. And it does make it easier if you hand tack because it helps to stop the fleece from slipping, which, which it does 
by its very nature. Okay, so starting at the leg, again using the side of my foot which is a quarter of an inch, and I'm just going to sew all the way around the curve. Just move the excess fabric out of the way. I don't want any tips and any footers in the fabric. So I'm trying to keep that as flat as I can. Always try and stop with your needle in the down position. And then when you do stop and carry on sewing, you carry on from the same point that you left off. bottom sewn in place. I'm just going to sew around the back side at the moment and then I need to sew the legs together. So this is my left leg. There are two parts to each leg, a large part and a smaller part and I'm going to sew the front sides of those together. Of course you'll pin that. Same seam allowance. And these, although they kind of look the same shape, they're not quite. So it is a case that you need to ease in the two sides so that the two, the two points match. They're both curved, but they're slightly different curves. So that's my left leg. This one's my right leg that I've already sewn together. And then what we'll need to do is to pin those into the holes that we've already got in the body of Humphrey. So that's the front of my body. There's Humphrey, look, with his, uh, with his trunk sticking upwards, that's his tummy. The bottom section's open and you can see the holes where his legs are going to go. Take the leg with the smaller side going onto the inside of the body, if you haven't numbered them and you can't remember which one it is. And then you're going to pin this all the way around the hole. And it's another one of those cases where the shapes that you're pinning together aren't the same, so they will try and fight back. So this is where it's important to pin. Your seams should match up as you go around that hole. And remember, the, the side that I'm pinning, the leg side is straight, but the leg hole is curved. But this is how Humphrey gets shape, and this is how he looks as though he's sitting down. This would be another good idea to hand sew, just with that overstitch, the same as we did in the armholes and around the trunk, if you find that easier. So, but for speed's sake again, uh, we shan't do that. So this, remember, is going all the way around the curve of the leg hole and the two sides should meet up in length. One more pin. Okay, then we'll sew across there. Because it's curved, you'll need to straighten out the curve and again, make sure that um, your seams aren't puckered. The raw edges are lying flat, even though they're in opposite directions. And there's no gathering of fabric. At the end of the day, if it does, and if it doesn't look right, um, you can carefully unpick the stitches and start again. It's not, it's not the end of the world. Right, I'll just take my pins out. So that's where we are. So front of Humphrey inside out, front tummy, and there's his leg sticking out to one side. Then I need to do the same with the other leg sticking out the other side. And as you see the two pieces of the leg sewn together, it's the shorter side that's his inside leg that goes on the inside of the body. And this again is going to be sewn around that curve, the hole that we're going to leave for his leg. 
So straight side against curved side. And we'll pin this again. Lots of pins. When you get to the inside leg, that seam should match up with the next one. Try not to stretch it too much because you don't want it to look gathered, but there is a little bit of ease tying, if you like. You can move the fabric so that those seams will match up. And take this all the way around the inside of that curve again. Until the end seams match there. I'll take that to the machine. Back to the end. Move my needle down. And again, keep that flat and making sure that the two edges of the fabric are lined up together even though they're curving in opposite directions. Now you've done the first leg, it kind of falls into place. You'll, you'll realise the way that this works now. One straight and one curved line, but they both meet. Bit, so I'll just stretch this out. I don't want to see puckers on the outside. And back to it. Okay, I'll just move the pins out of the way and we'll see where we are. The whole of Humphrey's bottom has been sewn in. Uh, the legs are sticking out either side and flapping around a bit. Now I need to join the whole of the inside of the leg section together. So, inside legs these are they, they're like little trumpets. The seam should match at the top here. So I'll pop a pin in there. This is across the front of his tummy and he's got a centre seam down his tummy. That should meet up with the second at the top of the legs here. And then that's the length of the inside of the second leg there. So what we're going to do is sew all the way across the inside of his leg. I'm going to stop when I get to that seam and leave the needle down, take my pin out, and then I can turn my fabric so I'm sewing across the front of his tummy, making sure that those seams line up again. with my needle down when I get to that seam, pivot around and then this is the inside of his second leg. I'm just making sure that that doesn't pucker. And back to Now the final bit are his feet. So this is how we're looking now. You can, you can actually see Humphrey. is a bit ragged and inside out, but you can see his form taking shape. The last section is to sew his feet on. Now his feet are in two ovals, and you can see the shape of his foot here forms an oval shape. So it doesn't have to be exact and perfect, but it'll sit across the shape of the oval. And we'll pin this all the way around. Trying not to stretch it again. I know I emphasise it a lot, but this is knitted fabric. It does stretch. And by the nature of the softness of the fleece, it does slip. So it's worth all of the preparation time here by pinning and sewing if you wanted to, just to make sure that everything fits together without any pleating or puckering or stretching or frilling. So that would be step one and then normally, certainly if this is the first time you've made a Humphrey for step two, I would hand sew all the way around. Okay. And under we go. So foot down. 
fit this foot into the foot. Keep your fabric flat as you're sewing it. Doesn't matter what's going on here, that's getting all twisted and knotted, so I'm just undoing that as I go. What's important is the section that's going underneath that needle. That's what I'm trying to keep flat. When I come back to the end of the circle, that the stitches where I start line up perfectly with the stitches where I finish. Now, normally on anything with a curve like this, I'd be saying cut into this with your pinking shears or snip into it uh, around the curve. But because this is a stretchy fabric, it's going to curve really easily. So there's foot number one. I just do exactly the same with the second foot by sewing the oval into the leg here. Right. So there's my two feet sewn into the bottom. The next thing to do is to turn Humphrey the right way out through the member left a hole in the middle of his back. So push all of the fabric through. If at any point when you turn him the right way out and you realise that you've, you've missed a bit or you've missed the hem, you can just turn him back inside out and sew over that before you start to stuff him. So there's his head. The legs are coming through. Find those and give them a push. There's one leg. There's two. And his arms are here. One arm. Two arms. Here he is. Oh, he's got no trunk. Let's find his trunk inside here. There he is. So there's little unstuffed Humphrey. So we better get him stuffed and looking nice and plump. I find it easier when I'm stuffing Humphrey to start with his extremities. So I stuff his trunk first and then his arms and his feet and then the back of the head. And this is all through the hole that you left in the back here. I'm using the softest, the best quality of stuffing that I can possibly find um, because it means that he's going to feel nicer when he's cuddled and um, it shouldn't be overstuffed. Humphrey should be soft and squashy and a little bit floppy. To get this stuffing into the, um, the more difficult tree areas, I'm just using a piece of dowling or it could be a skewer or a knitting needle but again, he should, he should sit floppy, his head should sit forward and he's not too overstuffed. So that, that'll be fine for my Humphrey. Um, to close over the, the hole in his back, I've taken some grey thread. You can see where the seam allowance was. The fabric automatically kind of folds inwards at that point. And it doesn't matter how neat your stitching is really here because um, the fleece actually hides the stitching. So I'm just going to sew over a couple of times to secure my stitch at the end. And I'm going to use a ladder stitch, which means that I pick up a stitch from one side, go straight across to a stitch from the other side, and go all the way down the opening until the opening is closed. As you pull the stitches across, they draw the two sides together. Keep them quite small if you can. Um, and then that'll look neater. But again, the, the stitches do tend to get lost inside the, the fleecy fabric. So we're, we're nearly finished. So I'll sew the hole down the back. And then there's just one final touch with Humphrey. And that's sewing his trunk down. So it faces downwards. I'll do that in just a second. So again, just one side to the other here. And then when I get to the bottom of the opening, just draw this up as I go, so you can barely see the stitches there. And when I come to the bottom of the opening, again I'm just going to sew over and over a few times to secure the thread. 
like so. So just knot off the end of my thread. Put that off close to his body. And then we'll turn him around. And just where the end of his trunk curls over, <coughs> sorry, Humphrey, we're going to put a stitch just in the end here to curl that trunk <coughs> over to the end. Can we do that one again? I'll have it in there. I can pick it up. So the final part is to take Humphrey's um, trunk and where it curls in just underneath here, I'm just going to put a few stitches and just curl that trunk over a little bit more. So if I lay him down, and just with my grey thread again, the same colour thread, I'm going to sew over and over about halfway around the curve of his trunk here and secure the stitch. And then take my thread to around about the same point on the bottom of his trunk there and pull that up. And I'll go over that just a few times just to secure that in place. And that's that last finishing touch that makes Humphrey look like Humphrey. So I'll just knot this thread off. Another quick knot. Snip off my thread. Oops, there's my knees off. And there you'll find that Humphrey's all finished. So he's soft and squashy and cute and cuddly and gorgeous. <laughs>